Devin Larratt's arm is a biomechanical puzzle, one that has baffled opponents for decades. His ability to manipulate wrist angles, rotate through pronation and supination, and generate relentless back pressure isn't just strength, it's a product of perfectly tuned anatomy, physics, and training. At the start of a match, his wrist is loose, often around 10 to 20 degrees flexion. This soft position allows him to absorb early surges. As he loads pressure, he increases flexion to 40 to 45 degrees, shortening the lever arm opponents can attack. Radial ulnar deviation. His ulnar deviation, pinky side bend, reaches 15 to 20 degrees in defensive setups, redirecting force away from his center line. In offensive moves, he shifts to radial deviation, creating a wedge-like structure that's harder to supinate. Every 5 degrees increase in wrist flexion reduces the torque. Opponents can apply by approximately 8%. By flexing to 45 degrees, Devin effectively shrinks his moment arm, forcing opponents to work harder. His initial pronation, 0 to 30 degrees, is powered by the pronator quadratus, deep forearm muscle, which engages at 87% MVC, max voluntary contraction. At 30 to 60 degrees, the pronator terrestre takes over, peaking at 92% MVC. This sequential activation conserves energy. Devon's back pressure is deceptive. It feels weaker than rivals like Levan, but it's optimized for endurance. Elbow at 90 degrees generates approximately 45 kilograms of backward force. Elbow at 45 degrees, loaded, peaks at approximately 68 kilograms, just enough to stall opponents. Full stretch, 120 degrees, drops to approximately 35 kilograms, but his biceps tendon remodeling, 14% larger insertion area, recovers tension faster. Devon prioritizes isometric holds at mid-range angles, 30 to 60 degrees elbow flexion, over max weight curls. This builds positional resilience, not at the core of his technique is the understanding that back pressure isn't just biceps and elbow flexion. It's a full chain kinetic movement involving the wrist, forearm, elbow, and shoulder in a carefully coordinated sequence. When Devon loads back pressure, he doesn't just yank straight backward. Instead, he angles his pull, often slightly upward or downward, depending on the opponent's defensive structure. This subtle directional shift changes the entire force vector of the match. If his opponent is pressing forward with a high wrist, Devon will angle his back pressure slightly downward, forcing them to fight not just against his arm, but against gravity as well. Conversely, if they're low and trying to drag him into a hook, he'll angle his pull upward, using their own downward force against them. When Devon's elbow is bent between 90 degrees and 110 degrees, he's at his most mechanically efficient. At this angle, his biceps, brachialis, and brachioradialis are all optimally engaged, but more importantly, his humerus, upper arm bone, and ulna, forearm bone, align in a way that maximizes force transfer. If he pulls with his elbow at a perfect 90 degrees, he can generate tremendous static force. But if he allows his elbow to drift slightly more open, say, to 100 degrees or 110 degrees, he gains a different kind of advantage, elastic energy storage. His tendons and connective tissues begin to act like loaded springs, absorbing his opponent's forward drive before snapping back with stored energy. This is why opponents often describe Devon's back pressure as slippery or unstable. It's not that he's weak at certain angles, but that he's deliberately operating in a range where his body can both absorb and redirect force. His shoulder positioning further refines this system. While many pullers keep their shoulders square and rigid, Devon often rolls his pulling side shoulder slightly forward, changing the angle of scapular engagement. This does two things. First, it allows his latissimus dorsi to contribute more directly to the backward drive, turning a pure arm movement into a full body pull. Second, it subtly alters the rotational axis of his humerus, making it harder for opponents to climb on top of his hand. If they try to press into him, his shoulder angle forces them to fight not just his arm, but the structural integrity of his entire torso.